climate change in the Arctic Circle region is a grave threat to the manageable future of all of humanity. The sea ice covering the Arctic Sea has been melting more and more rapidly over the last 30 years due to climate change and global warming. The challenge is such that what we do over the next 10 years is probably going to determine the future of humanity for the next few thousand years. Unless we act quickly, by mid-century, all of our coastal cities would be unmanageable. For example, 90% of the landmass of Vietnam will be under seawater at least once a year, less than 30 years from now. Where do the people go? who are subject to being underwater. What level of migration does that lead to? The consequences are severe. Here is the Russell Glacier, melting rapidly, causing that great river of water to flow into the ocean. It's black, it's darkened, and that is due to the arrival of soot from fires in the west, from burning forests, etc., and then the ice melts much more rapidly. When all of the ice is melted, global sea levels will have risen by seven meters, or 23 feet. But we must anticipate severe impact on our coastal cities within a few decades. There's another big threat that we have. The permafrost melting in the land surrounding the Arctic Sea causes rapid explosive release of methane. If it was all released over a 20-year period, global temperatures might rise by 5 to 8 degrees centigrade. Now clearly, these sea level rises and temperature rises and changes in global weather systems must be avoided. We need to actually return to an understanding of the importance of our ecological systems to our future. We are part of that ecology, and that's very clear because at the moment, we human beings, all of us together, are destroying the ecosystems that we depend on. The Centre for Climate Repair at Cambridge is working with global partners on the actions urgently needed to create a manageable future for humanity. This involves three R's. We need to reduce emissions deeply and rapidly. We need to remove excess greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. But perhaps the most pressing, we need to refreeze the Arctic. To buy time to enable us to manage those two first R's, now, how could we refreeze the Arctic? The most promising method, in our view, is to cool the Arctic Circle region during the polar summer by a method involving white cloud cover over the Arctic Circle during the three polar summer months. This would reflect sunlight away from the ice layer formed over the Arctic Sea during the polar winter with year-on-year -year growth of the last ice layer. A marine engineer, Stephen Salter, has designed a marine vessel which could create white clouds. This imitates the natural process that occurs when waves break over the ocean, creating tiny droplets of seawater which can be carried upwards by warm wind. As they travel up, each droplet loses water as vapor leaving a salt crystal so small it is invisible, less than a micron in diameter. A cloud of these salt crystals then hovers in the upper atmosphere and each crystal again attracts water vapor to recreate a tiny droplet. The accumulation of tiny droplets forms a white, bright cloud. However, 
We also need to produce the tiny droplets of water at scale. A vast number of tiny droplets of water need to be generated and without using energy input that we would be just as damaging as the normal processes of global warming. This is a very clever design in which the energy is picked up from the motion of the water currents and from the wind. And so potentially all of the energy needed can be obtained from these renewable sources. We would need 500 to 1,000 vessels around the Arctic operated remotely in the three polar summer months. We're faced with this enormous challenge that we've all created for ourselves. Somehow, I feel what could emerge is a better understanding between nations as we all deal with a common threat. What we're trying to do is return the Earth to a livable planet.